rush. Today we've got Carlos and Jesse, and Carlos will be explaining lead changing. Carlos, we were talking earlier on that um, Jesse's got some problems on lead changing. What do you mean? Uh, well, what it is, Joe, is uh, that uh, horses, you know, if you look at the, uh, the canter itself, should be is a three bit guy, which means that the horse it will make like three sounds, if you could say. And if she was actually cantering to the left in this instance here, she should be leading with the uh, with her left hind um, hind leg, and also picking up that lead with the front, um, the knee four. Um, what she do, has a tendency to do, she she actually turns and she'll pick up the lead behind, but she she actually. So it's incorrect. It's incorrect. So it's like counter, um, counter, just like cows do. So okay. she, you know, the movement is going to be affected. That'd be the same. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll just let you go. Um, you can show the viewers and myself um, the lead changing and what to do. Yeah, I'm just going to do a little drill just to actually prepare the horse to start to understand how to put her feet on the ground to pick up the correct lead. So we'll okay. Well, we'll let you go. Okay. Just going to um, move Jess up, and the, the first thing I'm going to do with her is. Um, just to make sure she's nice and supple and she gives nice to the rein there. I'm just bringing my hands out and same when I go to the other side. Just walk her around a little bit, get her to relax. Um, she had a tendency, she's here for training and she, you know, she has a tendency, again, she was really heavy on the, on the bridle and she was really pulling on the reins and um, that, that sometimes happens because they, they, they have a weak hindquarters as well. It's not necessarily mean they've got a dead mouth or so she needed to, to work on flexibility more than anything else. So I'm just, again, just getting it to, to supple a bit. And the mechanics of, a, of, of the lead change, what's going to happen in order for me to start teaching her to pick up the right lead is going to be um, to be able to have uh, control of her body. So in a second, I'm going to be walking and anything that is controlled from the width is forward is going to be a matter of controlling the front end with the reins and my leg pretty much on the girth. If she doesn't, if she doesn't um, move across uh, the front end, I probably just have to um, turn my toe. And you notice that uh, in her case, um, I'm wearing a, a set of um, spurs and the actual, I don't know if um, they can get a shot of it from there, but um, I've got the rail, which is actually taped up. So I'm not actually poking it. Um, it's just a night to emphasize the leg because she, she doesn't know what really the leg is. And I always type the uh, rails with tape, so there's actually no sensation. It's just a, a stronger leg contact. Before I ask her to um, to to actually start taking the picking up the correct lead, I must get her to understand where the body position is. So, in essence, what I, before I ask her to pick up the right lead, but at this I mean the correct lead, which I'm going to go to the left. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, I'm going to go in a circle, and I'm going to. The action of the legs are going to be in the reins is that I'm supporting the, the neck. I'm pushing the front end to the right. All right, it's going to be hind quarters um, to the left. And then I'm going to ask her to take the lead there. So also when the horse, um, the, you know, the action of the, of the inside leg on, on the girth is going to have a tendency to uh, give it a bit of arc and tip the nose into the, into the circle a bit. Now, I, I, I st we start with that and, and we, I try to do a Canter to the to the to the left and see she picks it up. So here we go. We just um, inside leg, pushing the front end uh, to the outside of the circle and give it a bit of bend on the nose. There, I just wanted to start tipping the nose hind quarters to the to the inside, and we'll, I'm going to start asking her. And there she goes. She picks it. Okay, and I'll stop it there. Boom. Just to to get her to understand that she picked it the right way. So once again, I gotta do, I repeat what I just done there. And this is so important, doesn't matter the discipline, whether reining horses, which you need to do a lot of lead changes, dressage horses, camp drafters, I mean, uh, trail riding horses. You want the horse to be able to pick up the right lead. Uh, and by saying the right lead is the correct lead on the, on the horse. So um, if I was, um, riding straight and then it comes to a tree that I want to go left, I, I definitely want the horse to be on the left lead rather than a right lead because he's going to be feeling um, out of, um, out of, um, sort of, out of whack. The horse is going to be cross um, counter countering. So here we go, just an inside leg on the girth and just get it to tip the nose to the inside of the circle a bit. Then I push with my hind leg there and I, and I kiss her on. And we'll try it again. and. Like I said, for a horse that actually was used to um, 
counter counter a lot she started to understand and this is this is how I managed to achieve for her to pick to start picking up the the corresponding legs but that mean if you look after the hind end the horse is going to have an automatic tendency to pick up um, to lead to actually follow up with the with the uh, shoulder as well with the front leg so don't concentrate so much on the leading leg on the at the front of the horse but rather at the back that's a driving uh, of the horse there so I'll try it one more, more and then we're going to try it on the other way so inside leg on the girth tipping the nose to the inside of the circle I'm going to push the hind quarters there to the inside and kiss her on and get her to pick up there again we'll, we'll try it now we're just going to keep the circles a bit bigger inside tip to the inside outside leg behind the girth and then we've got just kiss and touch. Then I just push her forward. Turn. And we'll stop her. There. Now yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, I'll ask her for the uh, counter departure and we'll see how she goes in trying to understand the uh, flying lead change. Stop there, I'm trying to back her up gently, and we're gonna quit there. Now, um, we're not gonna push her anymore. I mean, it's just, again, this is only her second lesson on, on, on trying to understand where the, leg, the legs um, go. So we'll stop there while we're on a positive note. Okay, Carlos, so I've got the polo stick because it started raining, but it stopped now. So I guess the game's out of the question. Yeah, well, we might have to play water polo instead. We might have to. Yeah. Well, let's get to a serious note. Um, how do you think Jessie went, and why did you cut her lesson so short? Look, I think she went um, pretty good. Yep. And um, the reason that I stopped the lesson when I did, as you know, is not a matter of because I wanted, just want to stop. It's a matter of because she, um, I started with a goal that she, she picked up the leads at least once or twice. She did that. She's got a long way to go, but um, I stopped on a good note uh, as a reward and just uh, as a matter of understanding for next time that um, we'll do the exercise again. Okay, but you've, you've probably got some viewers out there that'll say one or twice getting it is not enough, they're going to keep going. What does that do to a horse? Yeah, look, there's a lot of belief that the horse uh, might get bored or upset. It's not so much that. What I find that um, if you keep on drilling the horse when it does something good, that, that you start pretty much, a horse finds it very hard to understand whether they've done the right thing or the wrong thing. And sometimes what's gonna happen, Joe, is that they're gonna to resort to their previous behavior. So they'll error. go backwards. Yeah, and so I find that if I stop, you know, she did it once or twice, and we stopped there, and we weren't there for long. Um, having said that, if she didn't get it, you know, for within a half an hour, we'll maybe I did, down. yeah. Um, but the minute that she gives me the right response, I'll do it again as a refresher to yep. make sure it wasn't a fluke. Yep. And uh, once she does that, I'll stop on a good note. So what I say to you and everyone else is, you know, it's not so much what you're doing, but it's stopping what you're doing at the right time. That's how so. you do it. Yeah. Okay, guys, I hope you take that on board. Uh, stay tuned for more Horse Rush. back now we're here with the famous Jardines lookout Sarah and little Henry that is yeah that's right. Right? yeah that's right now how did Jardines lookout go today she did well didn't she yeah he did yeah he finished third this year he was seventh in it last year and I'm really proud of him for finishing third well, that's fantastic now Henry goes everywhere with him is that right yeah that's right yeah absolutely everywhere live together and do everything together and how's it going to be for the long trip back they even together on that yes right upside in the same pallet on the plane have you ever tried to have Jardine's look out on his own? Uh, yeah, we tried it over here and put them in separate boxes and they didn't like it. <laughs> okay, well that's a great horse story for you guys at home. Now thank you so much Sarah. It's a pleasure, thank you very much.
Hi guys, welcome back to Horse Rush. Now we're back here at the Cranbourne Equine Hospital with Dr. Graham Jeffries and his wonderful team. Now, Dr. Graham, what's happening today out here? Here, Tat, what we've got for the viewers today is a, a surgery. Um, the history with this horse is it's a, um, a thoroughbred that had a steak wound in a back leg a couple of years ago and uh, it appeared to settle down and everything seemed to be going on quite fine. But in the last week or so, the horse has been quite lame and uh, there is now a, a discharging wound from the back leg. So there's a thought that as a result of the injury uh, in the past, we've now perhaps got a foreign body and uh, the horse is going to be anaesthetised uh, and the air explored by one of our specialist uh, equine surgeons. Okay, well Ben's coming out now here with the horse now. He's been going to be in surgery with yeah, you? Yeah, ben, ben will be the anaesthetist today and uh, we're just preparing the horse. The horse has already had a, uh, a pre-anaesthetic blood uh, and a physical examination and the horse is now being taken down to the scales where the horse will be weighed. Uh, the weighing is important because we uh, uh, calculate our correct anaesthetic dose based on the horse's body weight uh, so we're doing it accurately and uh, obviously in the best interest of the horse. Okay now is that like humans the weight oh, ratio yeah. to? Well in human beings they weigh you and, and uh, do all the things so basically a lot of the procedures we do uh, for horses uh, prior to anaesthetics is very similar to what uh, they would do in a human hospital. We've uh, got uh, equine specialist surgeon Dr John Van Vendahl uh, ultrasounding a horse's uh, tendon. Uh, John, maybe tell the viewers uh, a little bit of history of this horse and what exactly you're doing in relation to the diagnosis and perhaps the treatment of this, uh, this injury. Sure, Graham. Well, this mare um, kicked out a few weeks ago, maybe six weeks ago, and she had a capped hock, that is just a fluid, fluid accumulation over the back or the point of the hock. Uh, we treated her with anti-inflammatories, but subsequent to that she's got it infected. Of course the bacteria are lodged into the inflamed area, and now she's quite sore here with some inflammation and infection in the tendon sheet. And we're just running the ultrasound over it to ascertain exactly what structures are involved and infected and what amount of scar tissue we have in here. And the, uh, the treatment would be done under a, a general anaesthetic, John, or under, oh, yes. under sedation? No, we'd have to do her under a general anaesthetic because they need to be absolutely still uh, with all the needles and catheters and things that would be passed into the structures. So, so uh, the x-rays we've taken here, uh, which are only the, the first radiograph, the uh, lateral shot, uh, John was looking to see whether there was any bony involvement with the, uh, uh, the, in and around the stifle joint, but uh, at the moment uh, it seems to be all clear. Uh, I'm monitoring the anaesthetic, and that involves uh, what we create is an oxygen tank for the delivery of fresh oxygen. We've got our uh, halothane uh, anaesthetic machine, which vaporises halothane that's what keeps our horses asleep. Uh, we've got our flow rate here. This is a carbon dioxide scavenger, which is uh, made of soda line and removes the carbon dioxide. It's a, called a circle flow anesthetic machine. And our uh, anesthetic breathing bag is there. And if you watch it for a minute, we'll see our horse take a nice deep breath. And here in front of me, we've got the uh, anesthetic monitoring machine, which does a specific oxygen and how much oxygen pressure there is in the horse's blood. And also gives me the horse's blood pressure. And we're checking the new membrane color to check real time if you see this little breath. And we'll breathe out. There we go. Yeah, the horse is a three year old. Um, as I said, staked its leg a year or so ago, appeared to recover uneventfully. Um, 
they had very little problems with the horse other than maybe some changes in the blood picture which uh, concerned them a little bit, didn't really know a reason why. Uh, but it's only recently the wound started to discharge and obviously the result of the um, injury a number of uh, years ago and we're basically uh, uh, attempting to find the cause. Now John's already found a little piece of wood, uh, whether there's more wood there or whatever and I mean a little piece of wood seems somewhat insignificant but uh, it's amazing how small a, a foreign body the, uh, the, the body reacts to can actually cause a problem. We're just, uh, just keeping the little piece of wood, uh, uh, probably to match it with anything else we may get. Uh, obviously, even from the point of view of the clients, the clients uh, like to see what you did get. So uh, uh, we're, 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 we're keeping it uh, as proof of, um, of what, what we found, but hopefully uh, we may find something bigger and better than that little insignificant, or what appears to be a little bit insignificant piece of wood. John's... Um, explored the area and, and at this point he hasn't been able to find uh, uh, a foreign body. He's found a, what he called a pyogenic membrane uh, which obviously in itself uh, acts as like foreign body to the horse which may have or probably has contributed to the discharge. Uh, so John's uh, having explored the area just flushing it out with a sterile saline solution. <laughs>
Come on, ladies. Come on. Fashion on the fields. Come on. Come on. I, you can jump in, yeah. Of course you can. I'm going to ask the big questions around here. I'm not interested oh, in what you're wearing. Can you block? Can you not block, mate? What do you mean to block? Are you, are you an item, a couple? We are. We are. Oh, we're not a couple. Of course we are. We're oh, friends. Oh, you're friends? You oh, haven't reached that level yet? No, no. Give it a couple of weeks. Oh, really? I'm pretty confident. Oh, really? Yeah. Who, who's actually purchased the tickets for this event here today? I have. I have. Whose connection is it? I work for Mooks. Mooks? Yeah, we got an invite from Cosmopolitan. Ladies, I know you're... You're the best dressed here this afternoon. Oh, oh, bl oh red. Oh, you're on television. Come here, oh. darlings. Look at you, debonair slash youthful. Oh, oh you're no, delightful. Grandma. You're a babe. What's your name? Joni Foster. Joni and? Coral. Coral. I'd love to know who dressed you both. Me. Uh, Laroc Fashions. Laroc Designs. Well, well. Do you like sexy shirts and all that stuff? Oh, oh yeah, do <laughs> I ever. Too, and jocks and socks and everything. Oh, do I ever. She's really good. Oh, yeah. Is that your hand on my ass? <laughs> Was that your oh, I, th I think so. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Anyway, ladies, why does this race stop a nation? Because it's exciting. It's because it's a Melbourne Cup. And we back the winner. Lady in red, if I could sing, I'd belt something out right oh, now. Belt it out. <laughs> belt it out. Why wouldn't it stop a nation? Because it's about power and horses and men and glamour God. and then money. If Reg was here, you know what he could say? Come here, old shagger. Come here. We'll leave you to it. Say Horse Rush TV to our viewers. Go on. So we're What's that? Are you re we're really on TV. You're really on TV. <laughs> Ladies. A bit of attention, ladies. We need you to acknowledge that we've got 10,000 viewers. We want you to say you're on Horse Rush TV. Horse Rush TV! Love you.